The entrepreneurial act is purely creative. This leads us to a brief theological and therefore meta-economic digression. I'm now going to take off my economist's hat and move into a completely different arena. Let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that there is a God and that he created everything out of love. Those who have faith will see it more clearly than those who do not. But let's assume he exists. And let's assume, for the sake of argument, that God, who created everything, created us in his own image and likeness. What can it mean to say he created us in his own image and likeness? The essence of God, the supreme creator, is to create from nothing. Then what would be the bridge between God and man, who is but a short-lived little ant in history and extremely limited in physical and spiritual terms, though he has a point of connection with God? What in our nature resembles that of the creator? What separates our nature from other natures, those of the animals, etc.? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is obviously entrepreneurship. That innate capacity we have to create from nothing, discover new knowledge about ends and means. In this sense, and in line with what we are explaining, and now from outside the sphere of economics, the link between God and man would lie precisely in entrepreneurship. In fact, what would make human beings happy is precisely to act well, that is, to achieve the ends they set for themselves. However, this clearly requires a theory of ethics. What ends must I pursue? This is a meta-economic question. What ends must I pursue? In the final part of the course, we will connect science with ethics, and we will see that at least on a social level, the social process of cooperation requires a framework of justice, that is, a framework of behavioral guidelines that respect a person's right to freely reap the fruits of his or her own entrepreneurial creativity. In short, private property. Without respect for private property, the process of entrepreneurial creativity is frustrated. Nevertheless, though this respect is sufficient to fuel the process of social cooperation, it is not sufficient in every area within the human sphere. In addition, we need a theory of ethics or a set of morals to indicate to us which ends we must achieve. In any case, what gives satisfaction and happiness to a human being on earth is to exercise entrepreneurship well, achieve his or her ends, and pursue the ends he or she should achieve. And here, with this should, we must introduce, outside the sphere of economics, a whole body of moral standards. Incidentally, Pope St. John Paul II published an encyclical entitled Centesimus Annus on the 100th anniversary of Leo XIII's Rerum Novarum. Centesimus Annus contains two sections, 44 and 45, I think, that seem as if they were dictated by Hayek, in other words, by one of the most eminent theorists of entrepreneurial knowledge, which is our topic. Notice what the former Pope writes. According to John Paul II, the decisive factor is man himself, that is, his capacity for knowledge in its two variants, scientific knowledge and practical knowledge. The author speaks of the network of knowledge and intercommunication, which makes up the market and society. He says the scarcest resource is man's entrepreneurial capacity for initiative and creativity. This view appears to be something very rare in the Catholic Church. The Church has gone ahead of the evolution of economic science. Instead of following behind, it has jumped ahead. Many of my colleagues remain anchored in the mathematical conception of social engineering and strictly scientific knowledge in the viewpoint of a social engineer. Now we come to the end of the meta-economic digression I wanted to make. I'll leave you to ponder the question, so, we are like God because we act entrepreneurially? And the answer is yes. But weren't entrepreneurs the bad guys? To attack entrepreneurs is to attack our most intimate nature. It's self-destructive. It's like infecting ourselves with a virus that destroys our immune system and eats away at us little by little. It's like attacking the profit motive, the search for profit. We fight against our own nature. I am simply articulating in scientific terms something that is clear to all of us, namely the essence of our own creative entrepreneurial nature.